Welcome to Behind the Drums with me, your host, Alex Angelides. What is this show all about? Well, this is a different way of us talking to y'all. Uh, instead of us coming to conference rooms and just selling you products, this is an opportunity to get inside of YouTube, to hear from some of our YouTube executives on some really new, exciting uh, opportunities for you, some different products that'll help drive your business, and also just kind of get a different perspective and an inside scoop on what's happening every day at the world's largest video platform. So let's get to it. Okay, so I know you're asking yourself or you're saying to yourself, well, he sells YouTube. The reality is I'm passionate about it because it reflects my own viewing habits. Let's say I want to watch some live music, which is one of the things that I love to sit and watch. Obviously, I'm sitting behind drums right now. There is so much incredible content, things I couldn't have ever had access to before, inside looks, concert footage. Um, it puts you right there in the moment, and I can get down that rabbit hole really quick and be there for hours. <laughs> So for me personally, I've had a ringside seat at this incredible transformation. If I think back 10, 11 years ago, and I looked at the scale, and I looked at the subscribers and the billions of views that these influencers that I had never heard of personally, and it was incredible to see. And I knew that the connection there for a brand was palpable. It was really exciting. The notion of branded content, the notion of influencer, you know, today has spawned the creator economy. We're talking about literally creating economy of billions of dollars in the way YouTube's business model shares revenue with these creators. That is so massively powerful for a brand YouTube at its core. <laughs> So I sat down with the incomparable Debbie Weinstein, the fabulous Debbie Weinstein, VP of YouTube, behind the drums, and here's our conversation. Are you going to play the again? drums? Sounds good. All the numbers and all the data that we know and everything we share with our, our advertisers and our partners about the scale of YouTube um, is tremendous. But for me, it's personal. For me, that's what's personal about it is the way I watch content. Well, I love the idea of primetime as personal. I think this notion that um, there are traditional formats of content that is what attracts consumer attention. I think the data proves that that is no longer what consumers want to spend their time with. I think you and I are great indicators of that as consumers of media. I love on YouTube that I can find exactly what I want to watch for that particular moment that I'm in. I have gotten really into surfing um, during the pandemic. It was a good like pandemic acquired hobby. I watch like the JOBs of the world, Jamie O'Brien, who's incredibly inspiring and you know does crazy stuff on big waves in Hawaii. And then I watch like lots of tutorials about like how to catch a green wave and like ha you know how to angle into the takeoff. It really trends with my passions at the moment. I think it really is an indicator of of how um, consumer behavior has changed. I talked to the the camera earlier about how that's changed for me. Okay. And how when I enter my living room, instead of turning the TV on. I bring my iPad and I go on YouTube and I literally sit for hours and I can go from music to sports to entertainment to whatever cars, you know, fix it. And that, you know, I'm a Gen Xer. You yes. may have guessed. Really? Yes. Not a boomer. I'm just oh. kidding. <laughs> wow, that hurts. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I too am wow. a Gen Xer. And it's interesting to me that you suggest that you don't watch it on your TV screen because actually one of the behaviors we see most commonly is exactly what you described. Take your iPad into the living room, find the content you watch but then to cast it onto the biggest screen with the best sound system in your house, which is a, a behavior that we have seen really take off over the last three to five years. And in the data, for example, that you see from Nielsen, where they track sort of how people are using streaming devices, it shows that YouTube is actually the number one service that people are accessing in the streaming world. That, that behavior of using connected TV devices, having YouTube be one of your top streaming sort of choices is definitely something we're seeing more and more with consumers. You know what? You've just inspired me. Oh, I've just goodness. written a song on the drums right now. If you sing along with me, Debbie rocks. Debbie rocks. <laughs> I can't right, sing. I can't. Yeah, and I can't sing that about myself. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, How about YouTube just, rocks? YouTube, YouTube rocks. YouTube rocks. Rock. What do you say to an advertiser or an agency or a brand that still has reticence? So I always encourage people to use tools like Reach Planner or any of their own, you know, proprietary tools. It doesn't have to be the the Google tools, but just to help them understand. I'm trying to achieve this for my business. Generally speaking, whatever business objective you're trying to reach, requi achieve, requires some kind of reach, some kind of scale with consumers. And so if you're trying to reach consumers at scale and you're looking around in the, in the world and saying, where can, I, where can I have that kind of reach and scale and where can I achieve it with the impact of sight, sound, and motion, inevitably you come up to YouTube. And I would say once people get to understand the data, then it usually is an emotional conversation. The, one of the most common conversations I have is, God, I see that you reach 2 billion monthly active users. Why are people turning on YouTube all the time? Like, and it goes back to what we were just talking about, about primetime is personal. About the, people can find the content that's right for them 
from a diverse set of voices that represent a much wider span of life experience. It's really a different phenomenon. The consumer is in charge of, of his or her viewing habits. And that is why this platform is so incredibly powerful for, for consumers and then ultimately marketers. You want me to show you how to play? Show me how to play. Okay. This is the snare drum. This is the bass drum. It sounds get... like jazz. Oh, I like that. That was really good. We talked earlier about the digital influencer giving birth to the creator economy, and here we are in the creator economy, yeah. and we have our new announcement about YouTube Shorts, about to rev share with creators on YouTube Shorts. Yeah. How do you think the impact of creator economy and YouTube's rev sharing business model has impacted content moving forward? I think the creator economy is fundamental to this evolution. And as the platform has evolved, we need to make sure that our monetization system keeps up with that. But when you talk to creators, what they will often say is, you know, the things that they really care about um, and the reason that they still find YouTube their home is they want platforms that help them find an audience and they want tools that help them express themselves creatively in a variety of different ways. And they ultimately want to make a living doing what they love. And YouTube has really enabled all of that for them. They are now able to express themselves through shorts. They can do long form. They can also do podcasting. They can go live. There's sort of all the different ways that creators can tell their stories. But then ultimately, they actually can participate in the economics. And I think that's one of the major differentiators of YouTube. And I think something we are very committed to. Uh, and I think our announcement about shorts is just the latest on that journey. How are we doing? <clears throat> Want me to ask yeah. you a question? Why don't I ask yeah, you a no, question? They, they hear from me. I, I would ask you, what's, what do you see working well for your customers? From an awareness standpoint, I mean, we're able to, with, for studios, move tracking now um, very, very quickly, very, very efficiently. I think that that's really exciting. The ability to kind of drive the full funnel on YouTube is hugely, hugely important and critical and has been successful for our streaming customers. Maybe mm. we can pivot to that a little bit and get your perspective on, you know, kind of the new forays into AVOD. Um, with Netflix and, and Disney Plus. How do you see that playing out in the competitive space? And how do you see you two playing alongside of that? I think that we are um, proud to have a role in helping those businesses establish themselves with um, potential, potential consumers and viewers. The opportunity to both market those services, but also have an entry point into those services through things like our uh, primetime channels that we launched, were, I think is really exciting. As I think about my streaming behavior as a consumer, one of the biggest challenges that people have is actually finding content. And I think that YouTube becomes sort of the default place that people go to try to find the content that, that they want to engage with. So I think this move into primetime channels and helping to um, sort of organize this very chaotic system that is emerging in the streaming side, I think is a big role that we'll have to play. This is the floor tom. These are the crash symbols. And this is called the ride symbol. Do you remember when you first realized that YouTube was going to be a big deal? YouTube makes the move in, what, 2011-ish, 2012, at that first brand cast mm. and makes the very public investment, $100 million, into premium content, to premium creators. And at that moment, that mm. was like, now YouTube is really in the game. And then I saw digital influencers with millions of subscribers and billions of views, and I saw the way their fans were interacting with them on a one-to-one -one basis almost, even with that many users. When you look at just the power of it at YouTube, you just kn I just knew this thing is this thing is a monster. I was actually a client side, and I remember we launched a campaign called Dove Sketches about real beauty and sort of helping people to reappraise the way they thought about beauty. I mean, it really caught fire around the world. And it was incredible because we could launch a video concept to consumers around the world in a single moment. And so we had women in Indonesia and Brazil and the UK and the US and all over the world engaging with this conversation. I saw it more from the marketer side and then I had an opportunity similarly, reasonably quickly after that to come and join Google and be part of this story and, and um, helping to figure out what were the ad products that we should develop to help not just the Dove sketches find viewership around the world, but actually to grow businesses fundamentally. And that's, uh, and that's been a really exciting, exciting journey for the last few years. You get the bass drum going, right? Just simple beat. And then you get the hi-hat. Wow. That's it.